in this lab, we're going to be making some predictions. We're going to be predicting how the amount of air in the balloon affects how far your balloon gets, as well as how much air in the balloon affects how fast it goes. All right? We're going to be measuring the time it takes for the balloon to go from one side of the room to the other. All right? Assuming that it makes it all the way across, that turns out to be about 8 meters. So we won't need to measure the exact distance that the balloon goes. We're just going to measure how long it takes from start to finish from one side of the room to the other. Okay? We're also going to figure out kind of the relationship between the size of the balloon and how fast it makes it to the other side of the room. So we're going to be using a measuring tape to measure the circumference of the balloon. We can do that in inches. Um, th this measuring tape does have centimeters, but they're really hard to read. They're on like this little tiny side right here. Um, and we're not going to be using that in a calculation. It's just our quick and easy way to compare one balloon size to another. Was this bigger or smaller? More air or less air? So we don't really need to stick to the metric system on this. We'll make it easy on ourselves and just measure in inches. Okay, so those are the two measurements we're going to be taking. How big the balloon is in circumference in inches, and we're also going to be measuring how long it takes for the balloon to basically move eight meters. All right. Now we can relate that to the acceleration and therefore the force, or vice versa, on the balloon. Um, so that's what we're going to be kind of doing um, in the next step after that. But let's start with this. We're going to measure out some balloons, get them to go across the room, and I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to do that. Now in order to get our balloons to fly in a pretty straight path from one side of the room to the other, um, we're going to be using a string for the balloon to travel on. Okay? Now in order for the balloon to be able to keep on this path, we need to attach it to something so that it you know, stays in line with the string. So we're going to be using just regular old drinking straws for that. Um, you can cut them to whatever length you want. You might even try a couple different lengths. Um, I'm just going to cut mine past the bendy part here. Just so it stays pretty straight, the bendy part can make it bent, which is kind of the point. Um, but we want this to travel pretty straight along this string, so that way um, you know, it doesn't have a whole lot of friction against it. Okay, we're going to loop this through on one side of the string. Okay. So here's one way you can do this. You can tape your straw to your balloon, it'll be like right here, thread your string through the handle of one of the cabinets, right? and then I'm going to have it kind of facing out like this so that way it can pull taut, pull tight. Sometimes if you have it you know, closed like this, and then you know, someone opens the door, then it goes slack, or if it opens mid-flight, then your string falls down. And if your string isn't tight, your balloon is going to be rubbing against the string more, which is going to slow it down and lessen its chances to get all the way across. So we're going to keep the door open. We're going to pull the string tight. Okay. Um, to use kind of the force of gravity for your benefit. And so that you don't have to keep pulling the string outwards the whole time, you can angle it across the handle here so that your force pulling downwards is the same as the force pulling this way. So this is kind of a, a neat physics trick that can relieve some of the, you know, problem of holding your hand up the whole time and waiting for someone to, you know, hook the balloon up and get it to go across and time it out. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of hold your hand down here than it is to hold it out, you know, on this side over here. Um, now you can tie the string too and then just have your straw on here the whole time and then just attach and reattach a balloon every time you go through this. Um, but sometimes people like to be able to take the straw off, change the straw, um, you know, hold the straw off the string to attach the balloon and things like that. So um, if you see yourself wanting to be able to take the straw off and you know, mess with stuff, you might not want to tie your string on because otherwise you're going to be cutting it and retying it every time. And at some point it's going to be too short to make it across. You'll need a whole new string. Okay, so I'm going to be tying mine here, mine here because I'm just going to be attaching it to the straw as is, but that's totally up to you. I, it's kind of easier to, you know, again, change things up in your experiment. If you have um, it not tied, you just hold it like this. It also makes it easier on you um, to have it tied if you're working, say, on your own or only with one other person. Um, this lab can be pretty tough when you don't have multiple hands on things to set up the balloon, you know, once it's 
inflated and then time it out as it moves across the room, hold the string tight. There's a lot of factors at play here that kind of all happen to happen at once. So um, if you're working in a small group or on your own, you might want to consider tying up your string and just making sure you have the straw you waited want it. So that way you can just attach the balloon, it goes across, reattach, goes across, reattach, and then so on and so on. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tie this up here um, and then uh, we're going to try launching some balloons. Okay, so I'll be timing each balloon as it moves roughly eight meters across from one side of the room to the other, from one cabinet door to the other. Um, I'll be going based on the circumference of the balloon around its thickest part. Again, we're not going to use that number in any math, so you know, it's okay if it's in inches instead of the metric system. But it's our way of just kind of gauging how big this balloon is. Got my straw that I'm going to hook it to. Got my piece of tape. I want to try and line this up as best I can so that the straw is in line with the end of the balloon. That way, if it's you know, at an angle, it's gonna kind of rotate and I'm gonna lose a lot of the balloon's energy. It's gonna get a lot of friction as it just winds around and around the string. So I wanna try and get it straight on so that it propels itself straight forward. The reactionary force, um, the opposite direction of the air moving out is gonna be straight along the string. This is a 29.0 inch balloon uh, around the circumference or around the widest part where I'm kind of drawing my finger here. So I'm gonna be attaching this to the straw. We're gonna set it across and hopefully keep it in line with the string well enough that um, it will have less friction and also hopefully won't wind itself around the string. We want the straw to be lined up nice with the end of the balloon. This is our 29.0 inch circumference balloon. Here we go. Well, it didn't make it all the way across, but about 2.14 seconds. So I might have to try a bigger balloon that will make it across all the way. 2.14 seconds. You'll probably want to replace the tape after every one or two balloons. Mine's starting to unstick pretty bad. So good to go with a fresh piece of tape. So this is a 30.5 inch circumference balloon. So here we go. Uh, 2.32 seconds. Okay. 2.65. This is a 31.0 inch circumference balloon. Three, two, one. 2.90 seconds. This is a 32.5 inch balloon. Three. Oops. Get in line. Three, two, one. Three point two three seconds.